Hi, and welcome to this video on rendering HTML dynamically inside uh, Business Central. I'm Eric, and uh, in this video, we're going to do a bit of hacking and adding a dynamically generated uh, HTML directly into a, a page inside uh, Business Central. This can be used for a lot of stuff, creating your own controls, adding uh, visualizations that's not really possible with, uh, with Business Central, or just giving your user a more pleasant experience. This is something that we use in some of our apps to, to make some of the you know, registration screens and stuff like that a bit more nice looking uh, and giving our own, own personal touch. Um, but hey, let's get going. So uh, the first thing we'll need is, um, is Business Central. I got one right here running on a Docker image uh, on my PC and I have a Visual Studio, I had got an extension, uh, opened a brand new one. The only thing I did was download some uh, some samples and um, yeah, we're ready to go. So um, let's start by, we, we need a page. We always need, need a page. So let's call it demo page. That's a good name for a page. Demo page. Um, let's uh, give it a caption. Demo, demo page and we could add a uh, usage category but uh, actually let's just make sure that we are actually using this as a startup page in our launch JSON we are so that's good so let's add some layout um, and we'll use the content area and now we need just to insert our HTML um, in order to do that, we need something called a user control. Uh, and depending where we look, it might be called something else. So let's call it user control AL here. The actual object is something called a control add-in. And it's the, the object type without a number that's very exotic. Um, this one needs some properties. It needs a what is known as a startup script. We will call it startup.json. It needs one or more scripts. And, and scripts are, think of this as libraries with functions that uh, that, that we need. Um, then let's tell this control that, hey, you can, you can, you can simply just uh, stretch true uh, and, and you can also stretch vertically horizontal stretch yeah and vertical stretch was what i was going to say and uh, let's give it a um, try to request a height of let's say 400 pixels you see the squiggly lines means that we have to add those files so the first file we're going to add is the uh, uh, a startup JSON, startup JSON. Um, so what we want to do here, since we want to inject HTML, we need somehow uh, some some place to, to to go and get and and put it. So let's create a variable called uh, HTML container and um, equal document dot get element by ID and a control add-in or user control in Business Central is is actually hosted inside a uh, inside an iframe, and there is a div segment, and we can grab that and use that as our our host container. That is the host container. So it's, it's called control add-in, spelled that way. Spelling is very important when you go into JavaScript. And then let's uh, tell the um, tell AL that hey. We're, we're loaded because we don't know otherwise when we're loaded. So Microsoft Dynamics.nav, and then we need to spell this right. So invoke extensibility method uh, and call it control ready. So this is the name of an event. So now we need to, and we don't pass any parameters to it. We could actually pass this one just to make it really uh, interesting, but we're not going to. So we need to add an event called control ready here. That's it. 
So now startup is good. Uh, then we need to render. So let's create a procedure called render and we'll pass some HTML to that one. Then we need to implement this procedure. That's not done in startup JSON. That's that's actually done in the um, startup JSON no startup JS, uh, JavaScript. So we'll create another file called scripts IPS JS JavaScript. And in here, let's create a function called render. It takes a parameter called HTML. And remember, we just we we grab the HTML container here, so we know where to do it. So let's do HTML HTML contain trainer container. That's also a good name. HTML container insert a JSON HTML. Where do we need to insert it? Well, there's a good spot called beforehand. Uh, it could also be a, like a pop or something like that, but it, it's a place on an, uh, inside a, the, the DOM of a document. So just before the end, we will add our HTML code. And let's save that. Go back and see, is our user control happy? Let's see if we can compile this. We probably could because we did some stuff on the demo page. So let's, let's go back to the demo page and, and and see now if we are able to insert a user control. Let's call it HTML lowercase. And now we have HTML uppercase, which was our uh, adding control. We'll add an application area because we must. And um, then remember we had the control ready uh, event. So that's in, the, in what's called an event on the on the user control on the add-in control is then called a trigger in here. So we will use this trigger and on that actual trigger, let's take current page dot HTML. That's our control dot render. That's the function we just specified here. Um, so now we're actually calling the JavaScript and we need to add some JavaScript and uh, let's do an a tag a ref equal HTTPS. Uh, how about that? That looks like uh, a great block explanation point. That's where we want, and we will finish that one off. This looks to be valid HTML. So let's just quickly check that we have everything. We can compile. We can. So we have a page, we have a control on the page, we have a user control, it has an event, has a procedure, we're calling the event, and we have the procedure here. So let's F5 and see how it goes. So now I'm expecting a page with the URL, uh, with the with the link on. Um, and we're just waiting for that. And we're getting a page without the link. So now we need to debug, I guess, to figure out what goes wrong. But but we wrote one line of code in AL, so the AL debugger won't help us. But let's try to turn on the page inspector on a browser. And on code type error, Microsoft.dynamics.nav.encode extensibility method is not a function. Ah, so I was apparently not very good at typing here. So let's, instead of encode, try with invoke. And you saw that even though we got an error in the JavaScript, the, the, the debugger in AL did not know about it at all. Nothing happened here. It was happy camper. But now it works and we have a great block here. And remember I said that this was this is actually an iframe. So this is like a web page inside a web page, meaning that if I click this, hey, I go to my block. So now we have my block inside uh, Business Central, which I recommend everybody to do. But in case that's really not what you want. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. 
stop the debugger and make this a bit more interesting. So let's add, wow, let's add a procedure called create table. Uh, give it a parameter for rows and end and columns and end. Um, and it needs to rerun, return text because HTML. So we need a text variable to send out. Uh, we need a couple of counters, one for rows, one for columns. Um, so out clearly must be filled out with a table. And let's add a border so we can see this and make sure that we have that 1998 kind of rendering style. And also actually use some HTML more modern and say that the width is 100%. Close the tag. And then at some point we need to close the table tag again. So let's do that right away and exit the out. So now we're creating a table tag. We're closing it off and, and returning it. Great. So let's do a for row equal one to rows to begin. And this time we're gonna add a table row. And probably need an equal to make that one happy. And let's do that again and close off the, um, the table row tag here. And in this one for C equal to columns equal one to columns to begin and add some columns. So in this case, it's called a table data. We'll just add, um, how about a, uh, a dot? And then we'll close that off. Let's take a look at this, create a table, add the table beginning tag for each row, equal one for rows, be one, two rows, for columns, columns, add, 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 exit. Excellent. Uh, so now I have to get rid of the stuff with my block. I kind of like that, but uh, hey. So render again, and this kind of let's call create table 10.8. So 10 rows, eight columns. Hit a five. Compiling, deploying, loading. And we have three dots. And there you go. We actually have a uh, HTML table. This is really late 90s table rendering style. We got the dots in it. Um, let's add one little finesse before we ship this product. Um, let's grab some data. Uh, and everybody's already or, always using items or customers. So I'll use steel accounts. Yes. Why not? Oops, not the account balance buffer. That's a rather boring table. Let's grab GL account. Uh, and hey, I know that we got plenty of GL accounts. So I've created a totally unprotected find set. And after each cell, I'm going to do a totally unprotected ne next because right now I, I'm betting something that we, I have more than 80. Uh, GL accounts. So instead of the dot, let's actually add the GL.name, so the name of a GL account. Okay. We hit a five, we publish, and we load. We have the three pulsing dots. This is very exciting. And boom, there you go. 10 by, by 8 blocks of uh, deal accounts. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to call this app on app source, but uh, it, it looks cool, kind of. Anyway, so that's it. That's how you create HTML and you manipulate HTML directly inside Business Central. And this is fairly safe because you're still working within the uh, in the confinement of the iframe. So, so, so 
go nuts. Uh, you can you can pretty much do anything if if you can do it in HTML and it can fit on the screen. You can fit it in here. I've seen lots of examples, and we use it in several of our products to kind of give it uh, some of the pages a more personal feel. Uh, there's also some tricks where you can actually. Uh, put resources inside the uh, user control and then you can you can get the name out of the user control so you can access you can add images and, and, and stuff like that but uh, I guess that's for another video so if you like stuff like this go uh, follow me on Twitter subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel and let me know if uh, there's something else that you want me to cover in a, in a video like this and until next time have fun